Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel of the vehicle. So firstly, I've got to say, I love the overall styling of this from the small metallic highlights running all throughout. Just the Ram badge in the middle there. And then we've got a red stitching right across the entire wheel itself. So it does look very sharp. But starting off the pad on the right hand side, that's just going to be our base cruise control system. So we can easily turn it on or off. We can set it increase, decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. We can cancel and resume. Now we do have the option for the adaptive cruise control system and one of the added packages. One of the big benefits of that system is that it would give us a little bit more flexibility. So it's literally our set it and forget it cruise. So let's say you set it at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. If the car in front of you slows down, yours will automatically brake. If they pick up speed, get out of the way, whatever the case may be, it'll pick you back up to your set speed again. But we do at least have a minimum regular cruise with the option for the adaptive cruise control system. On the left hand side, we have a series of different pads and things like that there. We have a few buttons there and that's literally going to be for our phone. So we can either answer or hang up on a phone call. And then we've also got our voice command prompt. So we can press that button if we wanna be able to make phone calls, we wanna navigate using our voice, change radio stations, things like that. So yeah. we do have quite a little bit of flexibility there. Now, one thing to point out, if we're connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we can press and hold it, and then that would literally pull up either our Siri or our Google Assistant as well. So definitely a nice thing. Pad on the left-hand side, so far left, we do have a series of different up and down arrow keys, etc. And as you can see there, that lets us navigate through that middle cluster screen there. So very first one is going to be for our kilometers per hour, so our digital speedometer. We can easily press the button in the middle to go between kilometers or miles per hour as well. Dropping down, we've got some base vehicle info so we can see what's going on with our tire pressure. Moving across, we've got our coolant temperature, transmission temperature, our oil, oil pressure, oil life, and a number of other things. So all of these different screens where we have the option of resetting, literally all we're gonna do, so we change our oil, things like that, we just press and hold the okay button in order for those base numbers to reset. So specifically when we look at this one, so our fuel economy, things like that, but we've got our off-road options there as well, so we can see exactly what's going on with our differential. So if we've locked it out, because we do have that rear axle lock there as well. So as you can see there, we hit rear axle lock and shows us there. So rear axle is currently unlocked, or we can do an electronic locking in order to be able to lock it out there as well. So it does give us that option of easily locking and unlocking the axle, which is nice. We can move over as well, just to see what our vehicle pitch and roll is. So we're going, we're going off-roading, we wanna see exactly what's going on with the vehicle, and we've got that option. Moving down, we've got our fuel economy. So we've got a few different options there and literally what we can do in order to be able to reset, we just press and hold the okay button. And in a second there, as you can see, it's reset. So it really is that simple. Same idea, we've got our trip counter. So we've got our trip one and trip two, so A versus B. And same idea, we're just gonna press okay in order to be able to reset that value as well. Audio, as you can see there, we do have our Sirius XM. We do have buttons in behind the steering wheel there as well, so we can easily change between our active sources there as well, so AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we were connected over Bluetooth, that would show up as an available option. If we had our USB stick or we were connected through auxiliary cables, things like that, we would be able to cycle through by pressing the button just in behind the steering wheel there. And then we can go up and down in order to change between our active stations there as well. So if we're on AM, FM, etc., we can literally just kind of go up and down in order to go between different stations. Now we do have another pad on the right hand side, but we'll get to that one in just a second. But moving down, we have our messages. So if our phone is connected, that would be there as an option. And then we've got our screen set up. So screen setup, we literally just hit okay there. And that gives us the flexibility to be able to customize the screen a bit. So it is kind of nice because you see as of right now, we're in the upper left and that section is highlighted. So we can change it to the compass, to the outside temperature, time, range to empty, and a number of other things. So you can customize what's showing up on some of these things, which is definitely a nice thing. We can just back out of it as well. Same idea, we can move and change around that upper right hand screen. So we've got our range to empty, a fuel economy, and a number of other things. Lower left, same idea, so we're changing out a few things. So it is nice to know that we've got some flexibility as to what's actually showing up, so you really can customize it. You can have none, so if you wanna get rid of those added distractions, you've got the ability to easily do that as well. Moving down, as you can see, a few other options, and then same idea, we've got our lower right. If you've played around with it a little bit too much, you're not really a fan of what's happened, we can go back to our defaults, and we can just restore everything back to our factory default settings there instead, which is gonna have us set up for the compass, we've got our temperature, and then our gauges there on the bottoms as well. And the same idea, we can ooh, jump back inside again because we can customize. So our left side versus the right side there as well. So left side, we have a few other options. So menu icons, we can have nothing there. Our ranges and a number of other things. 
same idea we go back and then we can go to the right there as well and then same idea we can customize what's showing up on that right screen so we really can customize the overall look and layout of this digital screen and i love the fact that we've got the option to be able to do that we've got our current gear there as well so we can either have current gear on or off and we're going to turn that one on and as of right now we're not in a gear but i guess technically we're in park but looking there we've also got our odometer so we can change a few things out so if you wanted to go for an extra decimal point so as you can see there along the very bottom it just adds it in so that 0.6 as well moving back we've got some favorite menus so we can literally show what menus are going to be showing up there so we can have our messages there screen setup speedometer and things like that and that's going to be all in our base favorite menu screen so we've got some flexibility as to what what screens are showing up in the center there do we want very top our speedometer do we want nothing there the compass showing there temperature time etc and then back to our upper left there as well so we do have quite a little bit of flexibility as to how this screen is set up but it is nice that we literally can customize each individual component of the screen itself but that's going to be the basics of the actual steering wheel now, as i mentioned we do have a pad on the left hand side behind the steering wheel there and that's going to let us change between our active sources very simply so if we go out to our audio again there Perfect. So as you can see there, we press button in the very middle, changes us between AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. And then we can just press up and down. So there's an up and down pad in order to be able to change between stations. We can press and hold there as well if we wanted to. Along the right hand side, we do also have another one. So as you can see there, that changes us between our different presets. So as we have different presets there, literally goes through different options. And then we can go up and down as well in order to be able to increase or decrease the volume. So we just kind of press up, we press down. Of course, I'm not in a station. That's a terrible audio test. Let's kind of go back there and let's go to an actual station. So let's go down. Let's see. I'm a big fan of 102.1. So, the edge. There we go. So as you can see, so we can easily adjust the volume by going up and down there as well. I do love the fact that these things are right in behind the steering wheel itself because as we're gripping the wheel, it is very, very simple in order to be able to change these things out as well. Like typically you're gonna find them inside of the pads here in a lot of other vehicles, but in the Dodge, Jeep, Ram lineup, etc., it is in behind the wheel, which I definitely just overall comfort, I think is a great idea. Now we do have a few other buttons a little bit further down so if we drop down a tiny little bit so we do have two buttons there so there is a highlight option there for our gear limit but we can change between the gears there as well so we've got our plus and our minus buttons so we can easily cycle through the eight speed automatic transmission if we want to now one thing to note if we start kind of going through different gears and things like that if you want to go back to the manual mode all you do is just keep on pushing until you cycle through to that eighth gear and then it just brings you back to that manual adjust where the vehicle literally will change out gears for us instead now the stick on the left hand side there so we don't have a right stick there so stick on the left side lets us control our wipers so we can easily adjust our wipers there as well we can pull in towards us for our high beams lock it out etc now, whether or not the high beams are gonna stay permanently locked out is going to depend on which mode you're in. So along the very bottom there, we do have our selector switch and we can literally select what mode we're in. So we've got a few different options there. If you wanna permanently lock out your high beams, like what we see there, we have to be in literally anything but the auto mode. So as of right now, we're not in the auto mode and that's why our high beams are locked out. But the second we turn into auto, it turns them off. So if you wanna make sure that you can permanently lock your high beams on, just be outside of the auto mode in order to be able to do that. But that's going to be the basics of the steering wheel, buttons, as well as the cluster screen. So that is pretty cool, right? I love the fact that inside of the Ram, similar to Dodge, Jeep, etc., we've got all of the buttons in the back there for our steering wheel. Love that fact. But if you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop down in the comments section below and let me know. More than a willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up and share it with your social networks, and think about subscribing. And until I see you next time, take care.